What's up everybody, it's Travis here from Travis.media. So when it comes to coding, there is a lot to learn. And I got this comment recently that I wanna to use today as kind of a springboard or a launching point on the idea of how to learn all of this stuff. So here's what the comment said. And again, I don't have any problem with the comment, no beef, no complaints. I love comments. I love when you guys comment, but I'm just using this to start the discussion. And it goes like this. Hi, I want to build a web application. I know coding and Python and JavaScript, but that's all. I don't know anything about web applications, HTML, CSS, front end, back end, routing, HTTP, databases, servers, protocols, etc. So how can I learn about these things and how do I build a web application? Could you please recommend a book explaining all these things for a complete beginner. So this person is building a web application. I wanna use this comment in the context of a person learning coding. And in the end, it'll apply to both people anyway. So what's happened in these recent years is that good, quality, thorough coding courses have become available to everyone for cheap. But what also has happened is that this has produced the opposite of what you think would then happen. Let me give you an analogy. So decades ago, we had these great guitarists. I mean, some of them are still alive, but we had this kind of surge of great guitarists. We had the Jimi Hendrix, the Eric Clapton, B.B. King, Carlos Santana. We had all these greats. And back in that day, there wasn't a lot of learning material. Some of these guys can't even read music still, but they became great guitarists. Well, how did they do that? Well, they did that by watching other people and by putting putting in hours and hours and hours of playing guitar. They got with friends and they played and they played and they learned scales they didn't even know were scales. They learned keys and they learned how to play with anyone without all of the material laid out for them. Fast forward to today, and I'm a guitarist, I know this, there's a bunch of Facebook groups of guys trying to get better at guitar, but they can't. And they're looking for all these courses and all these fingerboard cheat sheets and all of these easy ways to get better. They're stuck in this intermediate plateau and they want answers. And the difference is that now we have so much learning material, so many courses, so many five steps, solutions that we can't actually learn anymore. We have so many options that we spend all of our time shopping for the options that make it easiest for us. And in the end, we just end up shopping. And the solution to this is to trade the shopping for the learning. And of course, coding is not easy. I'm not saying it's easy, it's a tough pursuit. But so was being a left-handed guitarist that had to learn a right-handed guitar upside down. So in this video, I wanna give you three steps to making sure that you are progressing and not just shopping. There's a lot of material to learn. There's a ton of ways to learn it. How do you learn that material and not spend all of your time looking for the easy way out or the course that's easier than others, that explains it better than others, and get you through it faster. So here we go. Number one, grab one master course. So if you're not aiming to learn a particular thing, like MySQL databases, and you're trying to learn it all, like what do I need to know to be a web developer? There are courses that will teach you everything for 15 bucks. And I mean, one course, all the technologies, 15 bucks. When has it ever been this accessible? To me, this is mind blowing if you just step back and look at the big picture. A person or a team of people have literally taken an entire boot camp and methodically taught you everything you need to know in one course for $15. It's all there. If I was starting over again, I would just pick this one course to start. So let me show you some of these courses. First, the Web Developer Bootcamp 2023. Last updated September 2023 by Colt Steele. A great teacher, everybody knows him, he's done great work. And it teaches you this, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, Node, MongoDB, and more. So you get HTML, CSS, JavaScript, you get that front end web development, then you go into React, a front end framework, and then Node, a back end runtime, and then MongoDB, a popular database. And this course is 35 bucks. Even if it was 50 bucks, 100 bucks, compare that to a boot camp or compare that to a university. It's unbelievable. And here's another one. The complete 2023 web development bootcamp. Become a full stack web developer with just one course. HTML, CSS, JavaScript, Node, React, MongoDB, Web3, and decentralized apps, leave those out. But it's basically the same thing. And if you look, they're not skimping on this stuff. Introduction to HTML, intermediate HTML, there's CSS, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, CSS sections, a website, and a capstone for just that part. Then you get into JavaScript, and you get these challenges, you get projects, lots of coding exercises, everything in one course, that's my point. Yet, 2% of us would actually finish the course. Like nobody actually finishes the course. We get it, we start on it, and somehow we get sidetracked to something else, to learning through some other medium that somebody tells you is better, instead of just finishing the course. But if you did finish this course with all of the challenges and exercises and projects, it would be a monumental first stepping stone. So how do I learn all of this stuff? 
Well, it's all in one course. And by the way, I'll put links to these below in case you want to check them out yourself. And then there'll be a website like Zero to Mastery that has these career paths. So check this out. Become a web developer full stack career path. Let's explore this. So you have the complete web developer in 2023, another one of these all in one courses. Then you got a career advice workshop. You got some action steps about applying to jobs. You get this career toolkit about resume building and building a brand and all of that. And then look at this. You move on to some blog posts and then onto a course called the complete junior to senior web development roadmap. So you can learn some more advanced stuff. I would probably put this off until the end of this path, but if you scroll down a little further in this path through some other workshops and action items, you get to this master the coding interview, data structures and algorithms course. So in this scenario, you not only get all in one course, but you get a whole pathway that includes career advice, data structures and algorithms courses, JavaScript advanced concepts, and some other stuff. And of course, this one's a little more expensive. It's 23 bucks a month, but some people often need to spend a little money in order to take things seriously. So what I'm getting at here is that's step one, and it's a big step, and it's one you need to commit to. Pick one of these courses, all in one courses or pathways and commit to it. Don't stop until you finish it. Find some accountability. Find someone to push you each week to call you and say, hey, did you finish what you said you were gonna finish? And if you want me to push you along, you can always join the Travis Media community and I'll keep you accountable there. Now, this doesn't mean that you're guaranteed a job when you're done with this step, but you will have made a huge milestone in your skill set you will have set a solid foundation. You've learned all of these technologies. Now you're ready to move on to the next step. And that next step in step two is to build projects. Going back to the guitar analogies, this is you learning practically how to code. You've completed the training, you've built some projects with that instructor, so it's like a build along thing. Now it's time for you to build a couple of projects on your own. It's time for you to take your guitar and start jamming with the band. And the main takeaway here is that you need to think up an app that's somewhat unique and challenging. I did a video on this a while back, I'll link to it above, where I give an example of this note taker app that I built with React and Redux. And without getting into too many details, essentially I set out to build this app from scratch in order to get better at React. And I tried in almost all cases to consult the documentation. And it was a game changer because I ran into so many issues along the way that I had to really wrestle with to complete it. And by doing so, I learned so much more about React than I would have learned in any course. I learned what all the generic React messages mean, like map is not a function, and I learned how to resolve them, which by the way, will give you bonus points in an interview or a coding challenge as it shows your competency and that you've actually spent time working in this language or framework. But my point is, after learning all the material and building these small apps that we mentioned in step one, it's time to push the limits. Try to make that language yours. Try to build something that you are proud of and something you wanna show off to others. Wrestle with it break things, look up the documentation, fix it, and repeat until the app's done. And the third step in making sure that you're progressing and not just shopping is to continually be doing algorithm and coding challenges. When you start blasting that resume out to employers, any interviews that you pick up will have coding challenges for you. It's inevitable. This is scary and I think huge, if not the biggest hurdle for self-taught devs. In practicing these coding challenges and algorithms along the way will help you boost your confidence when that day comes. And don't wait until you're ready to start applying before you start tackling these algorithms. Start them once you get a little bit comfortable with the language. So probably back in step one. In the Travis Media community, we're doing one a week, and I think that's a good practice for you as well. One algorithm or coding challenge per week. And let me show you one place you can do this at for free. So if you go to freecodecamp.org, they have a section called JavaScript algorithms and data structures. This is assuming you're using JavaScript. If not, go to like codewars.com and you can pick your language there and it's free. But here you have a section called basic data structures. If I expand the course, there are a lot of easy data structures. Use an array to store a collection of data. So these are very basic. When you start learning JavaScript and you feel a little bit comfortable with it, you should start doing this one a week or maybe two a week if that works for you. So we see here, add items using splice, copy array items using slice, very basic data structures. So work through that early on. And then if you scroll down further, there's a section called intermediate algorithm scripting. If I open that up, it's a little bit harder. You have these challenges that really tax your brain, but you may see on your coding challenges in your interviews down the road. So come here and try to do all of these. And like I said, these should be a weekly habit, like working out. Then when you get to the interview, you will have more confidence. Also, you may get asked the famous FizzBuzz question, like I did, and sail right through it. So in conclusion, you learn the material by getting the course that teaches you 
all of it in actually finishing it, all of it. Then refine your skills with a solid, substantial, intermediate project that's unique to you, not a to-do app. And third, and all the while, be working on algorithms. And this will help you progress more and shop less. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, consider subscribing, and I'll see you in the next video.